Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Time for another model car review. Today we are looking at the amazing Mobius 1955 Chrysler 300. Now this car is the first in that great 300 series. Next year for 56 it would be the 300B and for 57 would be the 300C and onward and onward. But this is the original that came out so technically it would be a 300A. Anyway, we are going to take a look at this amazing machine. And now let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. And now we wind the clock all the way back to 1955, where we get to check out this amazing Chrysler 300 by Mobius. And what a fantastic looking kit this is. This box art is, of course, a reproduction of an original Chrysler 300 ad from the time period. Now let's just turn this up on the side here. We have this wonderful image of the Chrysler wheel with that amazing hubcap, which may have found its uses on many hot rods back in the day. Moving across, we get to see an artist's rendition of the interior. And then we get to this panel where we see the amazing front end of our Chrysler. Now, Volvo seemed to have used this type of grill on their Amazons in the later 1960s. Again, a really cool design and well worth it. We get more details of the kit on this side of the box where we see that this is a 125th scale all plastic assembly model. Over 125 detailed parts, Fully detailed firepower 90 degrees V8 Hemi engine. Includes original sales brochure reproduction. Paint and glue required for final assembly. Again, a really cool kit. And there's more of that old style advertising on the end of the box. Now let's see what's underneath the lid of this great looking model kit. And since it's a Mobius, we've done a few of these on the channel. You know you're in for a good time. All right, check this out. What we have right away is the chrome components and Mobius has put it in this nice bag with a little bit of paper in between so that the chrome doesn't rub on each other and rub off. So that's always nice. Here's the body of our car stuffed neatly in here. Really cool looking. Got the uh, undercarriage as well. Here's our clear components in the box. Then we have our plastic parts. Looks like the Hemi right there. Really cool. Can't wait to see that. How about you? Then we've got our interior as well as the hood there. Really nice as I look at it off screen. <laughs> Tires in a bag as well, which is always good so you don't get any tire burn onto the plastic. Check out those white walls. Those are really crisp looking. Now, it doesn't look like any raised lettering on there. Unfortunate. Got our full frame in here as well as some more parts. And there's the instruction manual down below and the full on sales brochure. Maybe that's it. I think that's it. All right, so I'm gonna clear this out of the way and then we'll investigate a little further. To begin with, we're gonna take a look at this cool reproduction of the original 1955 Chrysler 300 sales brochure. There's that car that was on the side of the box again, speeding away with the little speed lines. Really cool stuff, I like this. Full color too, nice to get some freebies when you buy a model. Makes up for some of the higher prices these days. But anyway, that being said, check this out. There is that full drawing again of the car in a nice cream beige color with a brown interior. Very cooler, cool. Smartly, superbly different and distinctive. Chrysler 300. Okay, we'll just move this across. Check that out. The Chrysler 300, America's greatest performing motor car. All right, I'm not gonna read this. You'll have to buy the model for that. But here's that interior again, looking really nice. Could easily paint this model this way or look on the internet for more optional colors. Then on the back, we have more. The Chrysler 300 specifications. And here it has the body style, which is a sports coupe, engine, fuel and lubricating system, cooling system, electrical system, chassis, steering, transmission, suspension, brakes, tires, rear axle ratio, dimensions, standard equipment, optional equipment. So again, 
Really cool stuff that they include in this kit. And now let's actually get into the kit, starting with our instructions. And here we have the Mobius Models trademark instruction sheet, full color. And you gotta love that because it really helps when you're building these things. 125th scale plastic model kit, skill level three. So this is for advanced ages, ages 15 and up with some experience, of course. Part number 1201. These are the assembly instructions, and again, taken right out of that sales brochure. On the lower half of the instruction sheet, we have these little boxes here. Important, read this first. Before assembling the model, study pictures carefully. These instructions include detailed drawings and images of an actual built-up for reference. You can also refer to photos on the packaging. In addition, you will find the following tips helpful. All right, so then it says all this. Do not hurry, work carefully and patiently. That is a key. Try not to build this model over dinner. <laughs> you know, take your time and build it properly. Allow your paints to dry. Painting your kit, use paint that is made, use paint that is made for use on plastic. Try to avoid your lacquers. De decal application and the keys to the parts. A circle with a number is a plastic part square with number is a decal. Now we get into building our model in the instruction sheets. So first off we have our engine assembly which is going down from letters A to D and there is a note that says it will be easiest to apply decals to engine before installing into chassis. See page 5 for decal placement. All right so here we have our Hemi and this is a dual quad carburetor intake manifold. And that's pretty cool. Look at these cylinder heads. They have the uh, rockers up in the top for the valves. All right, so we've got a left and right hand side engine block with a transmission on the back, the big heavy duty Chrysler transmission. And then you've got your oil pan going underneath for the transmission and the oil pan for the engine up here. The engine front cover and water pump right there. We've got our left and right hand side cylinder heads and left and right hand side valve covers and again that dual intake manifold. So that is step one on the construction of the engine. Now moving into step two of our engine construction. Here we start assembling everything to the completed engine block from part one or step one. And look at all this great stuff we have. We have the air cleaner with the right and left hand side air cleaner canisters on it going into these wonderful carburetors, and they even have the fuel lines attached. Upper and lower carburetor, distributor at the back, oil filler tube going in here, upper radiator hose, a generator power steering pump, starter motor, left and right hand exhaust manifolds, lower heater hose. We have a fan belt and pulley assembly, our fan. There's the right manifold. Oil filter, breather tube, transmission dipstick. So again, lots of cool stuff on this engine. We'll look really full in that engine bay. Down below we have our wheel assembly and here we have our wheel retainer and the inner wheel. Interesting how they're showing this going together. Usually the retainer goes in here and comes out that way. We also have our tire, our wheel cover, or you can use these wire wheels with the center cap. So that is, again, a really cool option. Over here in panel three, we start to assemble our interior. So here we have the right side interior panel, and then we've got our bench seat, and it's got a seat back going in there, as well as our back seat and the left interior side panel. All these drop down onto the floor. We also have a gas pedal, a headlight dimmer switch. Now that's pretty cool. You don't usually see these as a separate part in a model anywhere. A dashboard, transmission selector lever, as well as our steering wheel and the steering column. Panel four shows the construction of our chassis. Now there is a lot going on. There's actually two steps to this. The first is all up here. So we have our engine assembly going into the chassis pan with the interior glued up underneath here, or I guess on top, because this is upside down. We've got our left and right upper control arms. We have our lower steering column, front springs, 
right spindle and left spindle, as well as the lower front suspension and steering tie rods. Then we also have our exhaust pipes left and right with the chrome tips at the back. Going into the second panel down below, once you have 4A done, getting into 4B and eventually C, we have the wheel assemblies being glued onto the front spindles, the drive shaft, the differential gear housing being glued to the rear axle, and then the wheels being assembled on there. We also have our right and left rear springs, right and rear shock absorber mounts being glued on top of the springs, and then our shock absorbers being attached. One point would be up top here, and the lower point would be somewhere on the chassis down below. Next up, we have the radiator and firewall. So here we see the radiator in 5A with the fan shroud being glued on. Then we have the radiator core support in 5B with the right and left hand side horns being glued in, followed by 5C, which shows the firewall, the power brake booster, and the brake master cylinder all being assembled together. Panel 6A to D, that of course is on the assemblies over the side here, we have our body being glued together. Now this is just before it goes onto the frame. So what we have are the tail lights and tail light bezels being glued in at the back. We have the backlight or rear window being glued in, the front windscreen as well as left and right hand side vent windows, rear view mirror, firewall assembly, battery, radiator core assembly, and then we have our headlights. This is of course the bezels and the actual lenses being glued in and then those wonderful grills into there. So that completes our body build. Step seven is our final assembly. So what do we have? Well, we've got our radiator assembly being glued to the completed chassis and interior, and then the body drops on top of that. Steps B through C show our hood being dropped into place. We have our heater hose going in, the antenna as well, the rear bumper with the rear license plate, and the front bumper with the front license plate. We also have the hood latch being glued in over this little bridge here from the front of the body to the radiator support wall. On the back of the instructions, we see our completed model. Now this is the one that Mobius made, and these are all the decals that are going on. Again, a lot of cool things. We have the interior. It says to use black flooring, silver door handle hardware and detailing, natural leather seats and interior parts. Under the hood, we have the power steering fluid reservoir caution label right there, generator label there, and the coolant warning label going right here on the brace of the rad support. Underneath, we have our chassis here. It says, note the use of a variety of finishes from flat to high gloss on various parts of the chassis. This adds realism and interest to the completed model. See page six for color suggestions. Subtle weathering on various metal parts of the chassis can provide a realistic appearance to the model's underside. So again, this is what it would look like once it's all complete. The lower portion of the instruction sheet also shows the dashboard and you have your speedometer decal, fuel temperature gauge decal, radio face decal, clock, Chrysler logo. There's our engine all built up. We've got the air canister label, the generator label, power steering fluid reservoir, caution label, oil filler label, air, air canister label. So again, a lot of cool decals just to dress this all up and make it look accurate. One thing to note that if you do want to add engine wires to this model kit, the wires don't actually go over top and into the valve covers from the top. Back in this era, Chrysler wanted the engine bay to be nice and clean, so they used these little covers over top of the spark plug wires. So all the wires would actually exit out toward the back somewhere and then come into the distributor like this. So you wouldn't see them draped over into each of the cylinder heads because that's all covered up by this little cover. Getting down to the bottom, we can see our completed car here and all the other decals like license plates. So it's either 14 or 15, 
the 300 lettering, the Chrysler lettering for the side, and then up front we've got the Chrysler lettering on the front of the car, and then we also have the license plate choice down below, 300 lettering on the gas filler door, as well as on the other side, of course, there, and then Chrysler lettering on this side. So again, a really look cool looking model. Looks like they're using the wire wheels down here as well. So again, the choice is yours. Finally, on the back of the instruction sheet, we have the suggested paint colors. It says the 55 Chrysler 300 body was available in three factory colors, Tango Red, Formal Black, or Platinum White. So obviously the color of this model is Platinum White. And then it also gets into more. So there's all the different colors. And then it says Tester's Model Master Guards Red, Tester's Model Master Classic Black, or Tester's Auto Lacquer Wimbledon White. Now, of course, Model Master has been discontinued, sadly, but you can find these colors elsewhere. Again, this whole instruction sheet calls out for Tester's paints, so those of you that love Tester's will be able to use your favorite model paint on this great kit. Now let's get into the plastic components of our model car as we check out Mobius's amazing kit. So here we have the distinctive Chrysler 300 roof and upper body. Now this kit is quite amazing. You can see it still sort of has an earlier 50s style of roof onto it, but we won't fault it too much. Look at how cool this looks on the side. This, of course, being the first generation Chrysler 300. And uh, amazing stuff. We've got the gas filler door right there with the 300 on it. There is a seam line running up here, so you've got to make sure you clean that off. Actually, it doesn't feel like a seam line. Maybe it's just some mold release agent. You can see the Chrysler logo on there, as well as the molding. Door handle is nice. Could be opened up, I believe, if that's why they did it. Again, looking at the front, great detail on here. A lot of uh, good ways to make sure you don't have the headlight upside down is with this notch in here. There should be a little tab or something on the actual headlight itself. The Chrysler emblem looks excellent on there. Looks like it would be easy enough to paint. There's our inner fender aprons looking nice and smooth in there. You also have the two-way windshield wipers. Actually, they're opposed, I guess. So one will swing out this way, the other will swing out that way, as opposed to them both going in the same direction. Again, really nice smooth casting on here. Emblem on the back looks great. Let's turn it over. You can see a nice headliner up underneath there with sun visors as well. Excellent stuff. There are a couple of mold marks down in here, which you'll have to get rid of with your number 11 or number 16 hobby blade. Mold marks in the back. These look like they might interfere with the glass, so just make sure you've got them cleaned up and out of the way so that the glass sits down there nicely. Overall, I would give this model kit a real good mark. Looks excellent and should be easy to clean up. The next part we have is our interior pan. This was actually sitting inside the body. It has a nice carpet down below, as well as this box for the seats to fit in. Mobius stamp in the inside of the gas tank. Chrysler Corporation up under here, so you will have to sand that out in order to make it nice and smooth. Overall, though, that detail under there looks amazing place for the spare tire as well. You can see the tube running up to fill the gas out the side of the car. Again, really excellent work on here and should look good once you got the model all complete. Here we have the body with the chassis installed and you can see that it is a nice flush fit. Of course, this is just sitting in here loose. This is how it came in the bag. But again, there's no gaps along the edges. Looks like a nice fit indeed. And there it is, looking through the windows. <laughs> Again, really nice and uh, excellent. And you'll also notice that there is no flash. Here we have our first parts tree, and this was actually cut in a few places in order to fit in the bag. So I've just roughly head them together here. So what you can see is our upper radiator hoses. 
We've got the rad support wall, the radiator, the dipstick for the transmission. Then we have our air cleaner, our oil pan for the transmission, the front timing cover and water pump. We also have our cylinder heads, master cylinder, or sorry, power booster. We've got our battery here, horns right and left hand side. There's our engine block left and right. We also have our fan here, distributor, dual carburetors top and bottom. There's our valve covers. Then we've got that intake manifold. We also have, what was that again? <laughs> the, not too sure. Anyway, there we've got our air cleaners there. We've got our fan belt and the pulleys. We've got that, uh, <laughs> that vent tube. Then we have our exhaust manifolds as well as an upper radiator hose. And then a bunch of the oil filters and whatnot. Now here we've got our wheel backs and we also have our fan shroud for the radiator. So let's just bring all this up to the camera. Sorry I missed a couple of these little bits as to what they are. But overall you can see just how cool this looks. Radiator looks really good. Look at the rockers up there. Again, amazing stuff. Would be kind of cool to have this with the valve covers off. Look at the engine block. You can see the cylinder heads in there. Again, really cool stuff. Up underneath, yeah, there's a lot of mold marks in here. I don't know if you're going to see this side of it, but you definitely will on the radiator support wall. So be prepared to fill those all up. Now let's take a look at the other side. There is a bit of flash in there, but overall, I mean, not much. You can see the Chrysler Firepower lettering on the valve covers. Again, really cool. Really well done. This fan shroud also looks cool. Lots of rings on there. Neat stuff. A little piece fell off here. I hope that's not important. Looks like just a molding piece. Anyway, look at that. Really nice stuff. And then our wheel backs, of course, simplistic, but we need them. Still interested on how that uh, retainer bit actually goes. It's almost like it should be the other way around, like how AMT does it. If it is, there are four mold marks on each inner wheel that would need to be sanded down flat so that the retainer would allow these to spin around properly. Overall, though, I think this looks really excellent. It's going to be fun to build and look good once it's all well detailed. Here we have our ladder frame for the Chrysler 300. You can see how thick this frame is. That would be a really heavy duty frame back in the day. Very, very heavy duty. Again, really cool stuff. The detail on there is nice and crisp. No flash to be seen. You do have some seam lines, but of course those can always be cleaned up. I guess there's a little bit of flash around there, but I mean, nothing to cry about, definitely. Mold marks seem to be the bigger issue on this kit, but again, you could always fill those in or hope that some of them end up getting covered. But overall, this should be a nice, good frame for your car to sit on. Here's the rest of the part, trees from that bag that I just opened. So we had this as well as the frame I just showed. Now here we have the rear differential, and what's cool about this is there's actually the hydraulic brake line hoses sitting up here. And then we have our rear springs, our differential, as well as the front spindles. Very amazing looking steering wheel with hand grips on it as well. The wheel retainers, and that is the little headlight dimmer switch. And then we have our lower or our upper A arms, as well as this entire assembly which is our anti-sway bar. There's our steering column and the lower part of the steering column, the shock absorbers, the springs, the rear differential, as well as the upper A arms, and then the shock absorber tops and our hood latch. And then did I say about the exhaust pipes and manifolds? Or not manifolds, <laughs> mufflers. Okay, so let's take a look at this. The parts here look really hefty, like heavy duty. I'm not too sure how heavy duty they are in the real Chrysler 300, 
But again, there is that uh, brake line going up along the top, which is pretty rare to see. On this side there, we need the cover. Springs have mold marks on them. Differential again. Take a look at that steering wheel. Really nice looking stuff. The hand grips are amazing. Should be fun to paint up. Yep, yeah, good work. Okay, here we have the lower A-arms. You can see the little components in there for holding the spring in place. Turn it over. Looks good. Looking good. <laughs> yeah, no, more or less, this should be quite good to build. Look quite accurate. And uh, be loads of fun. So yeah, let me know if you built this, how you enjoyed this part of the assembly. Here we have our next parts tree, which was obviously cut in half by Mobius to fit in the box. But on it, we see our interior, like our seats, the dashboard. We also have our right and left hand side door panels, which are nicely molded in. I do like these separate side panels because you get all your window cranks and door handles to look actually like real window cranks and door handles instead of streaky blobs like you do in the tub. There's our seat back as well as the hood. So bringing this up to the camera, take a look at how plushy these seats are. And there's the back seat looking nice and good. Look at that upholstery. It looks like you could really sit on this and enjoy it. There we have the front seat. Again, another masterful piece by Mobius. Looking really good. Look at that dashboard right there. Again, amazing. Now this is not symmetrical like some of the other cars of the 50s, but more asymmetrical. I do like this vent in here. Kind of makes me think of Robbie the Robot or something to that effect. All the little gauges and everything, the radio face. And then there we have the amazing firewall with the heater motor up here. Again, beautiful looking work. Turning it over, inspecting for mold marks. There are some in the seats, but that's all going to be covered. Same with the firewall. Really, you don't need to worry about these mold marks at all, unless you find they interfere with some of the building construction. Taking a look at this parts tree with our hood on it. So we see the inner door panels. Another nice thing about this is you can add your bare metal foil or Molotol pen and get them nicely painted. Looking at the seat back, looks pretty nice. Interesting, there's no um, little bar in here for hanging your blanket in. But that's okay. Maybe by this time the heater motors were a lot better in the cars. There's under the hood. Amazingly, I don't see any mold marks anywhere there. So that is good, nice and clean. Wonder how uh, hard it was for Mobius to do that. But here we have mold marks on the back of the inner door panels, which are nice because you won't see them once you glue this all together. Overall, though, I think these parts are wonderful. And like I say, will look good in your model. Next up, we have our three chrome parts trees, and these are really well done. You can see the front bumpers have holes in them for where the front license plate goes on. There's the license plate housings. We also have our stock wheel covers and these amazing knockoff wire wheels, which are really cool. There's our exhaust tips, rear view mirror, antenna. We've got our rear taillight bezels, as well as the front headlight bezels and those little marker or driving light bezels. They may even be turn signals. There's our grills, which look amazing. And you can actually see underneath them as well. So that's good. Let's bring this up to the camera. Check out those grills. Very nicely done. There's our headlights and then our hubcaps. These are more the standard 300 hubcaps, but you could also use them on a hot rod if you want, or a different car. There's little stops there so you get your headlights positioned properly. Again, really cool stuff. There is this little bit here. I think that's the shift lever off the gear stick. Or, sorry, the, the console. Um, at any rate, it looks pretty good. Let's take a look at these amazing wire wheels. Look at those guys. Are they see-through? No, they're not see-through to the back. But you could add in your black wash in there and just rub them off. It should look good. I don't know if Pete's actually tried to open up wires 
in his uh, model kits. That would be an interesting video for Pete. Might drive him crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, there's the bumpers. Again, they've got nice long pins in here so you can glue them up tight into the body. That's pretty cool. Some mold marks down below which should be filed flat. Actually, you know what's kind of cool about this? Usually someone was saying that there's always like a line up on the ends of these bumpers, which is true. But the line on these ones is so light that it's actually, you know, looks like an addition to the bumper, as I think it might have been back in the day. But, you know, nothing to really be too concerned about. It almost disappears. You don't really notice it. Unlike some of the AMT kits where that was sitting up like an entire sail or something like that off the edges of the bumpers. So again, really nice work done by Mobius. Here we have the clear components that make up our glass, as well as the headlights and front turn signals. No drafts, and we also have our rear tail lamps in here. Now what makes these windows really cool is that they do have a bit of a countersunk bit in here so that the glass will fit flush up inside the car. There's our headlights. Now remember to get these uh, meshes north, south, east, and west, and not off at some funny angle. And then, of course, our rear, rear window right there. Remember that movie, Rear Window? <laughs> anyway, with uh, James Stewart. So there's our rear tail lamps as well. Nice detail on those. Very, very classic indeed. Speaking of rear window, here is James Stewart in Alfred Hitchcock's rear window. The movie came out the year before, 1954. Again, another great classic if you're into these old movies. Here we have the tires for the model kit, and look at how great these white walls are. Nice and clean and very, very tall. Now, there are no, like, manufacturer names on here, no Firestone, Bridgeport, Goodyear, anything like that, Atlas. But the tread on here looks really nice, real accurate to the proper tire. I might have a bit of trouble, there we go, getting an image on here because I zoomed the camera in so much. You could also reverse these and have the black wall sticking out, but boy, I can't resist those white walls, they're nice. These also have the pie crust edge on the tires. So again, really cool looking stuff. Could also be used in some of your other models if you want alternative tires. Last but not least, we have the decal sheet and now we'll unveil it. Now what we have down below are Michigan My 300 license plates as well as Mobius plates. Now you could always redo these with some, you know, period correct license plates. Up above, we've got all the different instrument panel decals, as well as Chrysler logos, under hood decals, and again, Chrysler's and 300s. So not too much like flames or anything, but decals in the right spot where you need them. Thank you very much for checking out this video of Mobius Chrysler 300 from 1955. And like I was saying before, if you have built this kit in the past, let me know how you enjoyed it in the comments down below. Did it go together well, or did you have some issues with it? I want to know, because I'm going to build this one day, and I just want to be forewarned, because forewarned is forearmed. And how better to build a model than with four arms? All right, if you want to find some model kits for sale, why not check out my website, www.monster-hobbies.ca, and see what we have for you. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, click that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. Until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in a new Chrysler.